Hey guys and girls, happy holidays. Bored now back with you for this horror movie review. And on this video, I will be reviewing the latest version of Black Christmas from 20, well, obviously from 2019, Schoolboy era. It's recently came out, came out last week. So went to see it at the weekend in the cinema. I've obviously done the other two versions of Black Christmas recently, the 2006 remake, and of course the Bob Clark classic from the 1970s. So, yeah, I'm going to review the latest version, which is sort of... I mean, it is a remake, the plot's very similar, but at the same time, they do do a lot of different stuff with it. They're trying to update it, trying to make it more of a feminist-style film, and there's a lot of other stuff going on. So, I mean, in a way, it's it's only a remake in name only, and the fact you do get the setting of the house and the girls being sort of killed off one by one but there's a lot of changes as well so I think this probably does class as more of a reboot of Black Christmas and I think they're sort of hoping then then it's going to start a new franchise but we'll see it depends how it does obviously at the box office I think it's had a modest sort of return so far so I'm not sure there's enough at the moment for there to be in a, like a sequel, but but we'll see. I mean, things might pick up. It's obviously a tough time to release it at Christmas, really, as as a horror movie. But in any case, so it's a Bloomhouse production, and it's directed by Sophia Sophia Taki Taki. Yeah, I I, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Who I think. A couple of years ago was um, talked up as one of the promising, you know, new directors in the horror genre. I, 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 I don't think I've seen any of her other films. This is the first one. Um, you've got Imogen Poots in there, who's probably the best known of the cast. She plays like the main character. Um, I should say she's 30 now and yet she's playing a college age student. Um, they, they also seem to make a quite frumpy it seems to say they were going for that you know the less of the glamorous one glamorous girls even though she is sort of really beautiful in reality but you know she i guess she passes for her early 20s in the film so isn't it's not really a massive problem um but she's the main main cast member anyway that the one you all sort of know most likely so it's a similar plot, except this time there's this feminist thing plot going on in the background, and you know it. They go to like this this institution, this college hall form college. You've got oh, of course, I almost forgot him, Curly Els um, of Princess Bride fame. He was recently in Stranger Things. Seen him in a lot of films over the years, but he, he's I guess the other big name in the cast. He plays like the sort of weirdo principal um, of the school, um, of the college. And there's this whole, like, rivalry between, like, this group of girls and the fraternity frat boys because um, the Imogen Boot Poots character has been raped, like, a year previous, and so there's been a big remonstration about that. Um, obviously it's still very raw for her we see that in the film in the early going you know her having flashbacks and and she hears then the guy has returned the guy who who raped her has returned for whatever it is like the holidays or something so that's that's bringing back up memories and at the same time her best friend Chris who's played by Annalise Shannon she's um, really making a lot of protest and, and really um, pushing for the school to become more more unbiased and more more encouraging of, of females really you know less sort of sexist there's this this kind of idea that it's a really sexist sort of institution so you get that stuff going on so there is sort of a feminist plot but then obviously we get the slasher plot as well with the girls slowly being picked off and them obviously trying to figure out who it is sort of thing 
Um, so I think the main problem with the film is that those two sides never really come together successfully, you never quite buy it, then it's part of the same film. It's very uneven. I appreciate what they're trying to do with the feminist message, but they just... They really bash you over the head with it. There's nothing subtle about the film. Um, it could have done with a bit more subtlety. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, I think the film lives or dies partly on whether you enjoy the company of the lead characters, if you like them, if you engage with them. And personally, I didn't. So that I think that goes a long way to me actually not enjoying the film at all. I, I actually found them pretty annoying at times. I think apart from Image and Poots, I mean, maybe Annalise Shannon as well was was quite solid, but obviously Curly Elms is, is you know, he's, he's a good sort of consistent character actor and he's, he's ideal casting really is the sort of sleazy principal of the school. Um, but I'll get to him in a moment. But he's obviously not in the film that much. It's sort of more of a cameo appearance. So in general, yeah, I didn't think the acting was very good. I thought it was very wooden. I mean, at one point you have, um, I mean, two really bad performances. You have this, this guy who's dating one of the main girls and he's just, He's meant to be like kind of more on their side, but at, at some point, you know, he he chips in on the whole gender debate. But he's like this really wooden, like boring version of Jake Gyllenhaal, and he just looks like this Jake Gyllenhaal sort of knockoff in a way. Um, and then you have this this love interest for the Image and Poots character. And, you know, he's this kind of stereotypical, shy sort of guy. He's caught up in the whole frat thing, but he's actually more sensitive. So that that's a real cliche. Uh, and they go down the route of him at one point putting him as like a red herring. Oh, could he actually be the guy behind this? Um, but he's, he's another really, really bad actor. And I mean, some of it might be more down to the writing not being that great, not being fleshed out, um, or how he'd been directed. But I actually thought most of the cast were, were pretty awful in this. Imogen Poot's definitely the standout. And, and I guess, as I said, Annalise Shannon maybe not too bad. So I at least probably brought into their friendship. The film actually starts off quite promising. Um, the opening kill scene I did like. Um, and it, it's one of the ways they've updated like the themes of the original. Because in the original Black Christmas, you obviously get the creepy guy, um, Billy, you know, phoning them, leaving obscene messages. All very sort of cryptic and very creepy. But this time they've modernized it and they've turned it into like this sort of online type thing this sort of whatsapp style messaging service and so what you get in the opening scene is you get a, one of the college girls um wandering down the street she's on her phone and this guy happens to be what appears to her be stalking her you know following her and and she's on her phone and she just happens to be getting this weird sort of message at the same time so it sort of appears to her then it's actually the guy sending her the message and stalking her but there's a swerve where it turns out not to be him and she's sort of grabbed from behind and kind of um you know, it's sort of a quick sort of kill. I mean, apparently this is meant to be PG-13. That's something they wanted to go for to try and get the teenage audience in. So I think that does show in most of the kills. It's not a very gory um, slasher film, if you like. Um, but this this opening kill I did think was quite effective. I, I sort of quite like, you know, the imagery in the 
in, in Madrid in the snow because she actually makes as she's struggling to try and get away she actually does make uh, an angel shape um, in the snow and you get like an overhead aerial shot of it so that's all good because part of the point of Black Christmas is it's kind of using the Christmas setting and doing something quite sort of um, sinister with it I think also the imagery of Christmas and I think the fact that I think the school itself and some of their beliefs, I think they come across as really quite nutty and religious. Um, and that's not me attacking all religion or, or people who believe it. It's just, you know, sometimes when religion is used in that very extreme sort of far right sort of way. Um, so I think maybe that's partly what she was thinking with the angel sort of um, images. But it's a good opening kill. It's, it's pretty effective. So it the film actually gets off to a promising start. I think one of the other best scenes is the scene at the fraternity. So they're, they're, they're planning like this Christmas dance this like sexy sort of number where they're kind of um you know dressed as santa dressed in santa outfits they're doing like this sexy dance and song and it's at the fraternity so so the whole idea is that they're they're entertaining the guys and the way they set this off and pay it off is is actually really clever because um, they, they sort of encourage the image and Poot's character to take part and you know at the time you think well why are you doing this when she's been through this but she reluctantly gets involved that they convince her that then she's key to, to the performance um, and it turns out to be a twist they turn it around on the fraternity boys I mean the guys there the guy who raped the image and Poots character he's at the performance so he um, gets to see all this and what they do is they start off with a conventional like sexy Santa type dance singing and then they turn it around they do this whole song where they use the lyrics to really shame you know the rape and the whole culture and the fraternity um laddie sort of culture so it's, it's actually really clever because as a, they don't see it coming and as a viewer you don't see it coming because we've been set up there's been no indication to suggest this is what they're doing they're actually turning the tables on the fraternity guys it's actually set up as they're just doing this regular you know sort of stereotypical type number so it's a really clever scene the only problem i've got with it is it still feels a bit heightened it still feels a bit cartoonish in the way the two genders are so divided in it you know the way conveniently all the girls start cheering it and all, all the men start booing it i mean that just was was a little bit on the nose and i just think it's it's just a strange sort of thing where, I mean, okay, it's satire, but it's almost played for laughs a little bit in the scene. Um, you know, I like what they were doing with it, but it, it still felt a little bit contrived. But I guess if they did more stuff like it in the film and if if the film could work the two halves together more successfully, then, you know, I think it could be a, a really strong film or certainly a much better film. Um, but that scene was quite clever, even though it, it became a bit cartoonish. And what they do there in, then is the whole video goes viral and that becomes a thing. So that's a way for them to modernise Black Christmas. So, so that's stuff I don't really have a problem with. But I mean, you know, they don't really build on it. And I mean, other st I'm going to talk about the ending in a bit. But, you know, they really hammer home this stuff at times. And it doesn't, it's not really given the attention all the time it deserves it. And they do really go for it in quite a cheesy sort of way at times. Um, and personally, I think I did find the characters annoying, so that's a problem. Generally, outside of the opening kill, the kills aren't very good in the film. They felt very 
watered down and weak um they come out of nowhere but they're sort of the editing is really sort of clunky and soppy they they cut away sort of too soon like a split second or a second or too too soon you know you really could add a, a greater effect if they've st if they stayed on the shot um just that little bit longer but i guess that's to do with the you know the pg-13 rating um you know there's quite an interesting sort of kill in the hallway but again that has a similar problem um yeah i don't know if it was the material and the fact they were trying to appeal to a teenage like audience so they they decided to dumb it down and and maybe it could have been more effective if they really went in for the kill so to speak uh, and really just I don't know, just settled on a theme maybe with the film, so it was more focused. I appreciate some of the stuff they were doing, but overall I don't think it really worked. I think I admire the film for going for something. I mean, I certainly admire it more than the first um, remake of Black Christmas, because that was just going for your by-the-numbers generic sort of slasher remake. Um... But unfortunately for me, most of what this film tries just doesn't pay off. And it does end up being, even though it's only 90 minutes long, it ends up being a little bit boring for me. It did end up dragging a little bit. And I just didn't, I mean, I think it maybe lives or dies on whether you enjoy the characters. Come, and no, I actually didn't. I, I did find them a bit too whiny you know there was good ideas in there the feminist ideas but yeah I, I actually didn't like the characters that much so i think that let it down and and the acting overall i didn't think was very good i thought there were some really wooden performances apart from poots and you know maybe one or two others the other problem i think was the way they just they just went into overdrive with the red herrings, so they really hit that hard. I mean, Curly Elves, is, as as I said, the sleazy principal. I mean, apart from The Prince's Bride, is there another film with Curly Elves in where he's not played a sleaze bag? So it just seems obvious to me that, oh, Curly Elves there, because there's this like melodramatic like classroom scene early on he's teaching like this class and he's doing this grand speech and i think that's like a red flag this guy is a sexist this guy is a sexist sort of thing the way he's talking i mean it's sort of quite amusing in a cheesy sort of way but it's so over the top and in your face and it's curly l's i'm sorry from the moment he's on screen you think oh that could be a bad guy he could be a potential killer, even though it seemed too obvious, a red herring. You thought, yeah, he's going to be a sleazebag. He could be the killer. Um, and I'll get to that because he is part of it, although not the exact killer. Um, and you get, as I said, with Imogen Poots' his character boyfriend, he could be the killer. He's set up as being this potentially too good to be true sort of guy who could be involved in it some so there's two or three red herrings which is at least one red herring too many obviously you've got the original guy who who raped the poots character it's just too much they just try and cram too much in there and then oh my god we get to the batshit insane finale the twist at the end which and I'm not the first person to remind me that, but it did remind me of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode. Um, Reptile Boy, that's it. Similar sort of premise. So we get this twist where, I mean, earlier in the film, the Imogen Poots character has seen like this sort of weird sort of ceremony going on. Um, and it's just absolutely crazy. The twist just doesn't add up. And it's just so silly and comes out of left field. But it's basically then their mind control in them. Um, like this sort of, this funk, this ooze coming from this statue is mind control in all these fraternity lads. And it, it's, it goes back in history to the guy who originally started the universe or the college. 
Um, you know, that's the whole thing. He was a sexist. He feels that like he's very anti-women. He feel you know, men being oppressed by women, um, or at least these fraternity guys do, the current um, principal, the Curly Elves does. So that's kind of the whole thing. It's like this thing that goes all the way back to so historically men against women you know they're anti-women so they're they're basically this funk this ooze i mean how dumb is that is mind control in these fraternity guys to kill girls that's the that's the whole twist it's absolutely insane i mean what i'll say is you you get because they're really packing stuff in near the end so you get you know the big set pieces in the house i mean i do like you get a bit of constructive argument about the best way to deal one of the girls criticizes you know um you know is it the best idea to post these videos and stuff so you do get some interesting debate on which is the best way to deal with you know sexist behavior and stuff so Although, again, I thought that scene did go a bit melodramatic, um, you know, because that's kind of the scene where, like, the sort of, the Jake Gyllenhaal lookalike starts getting uptight because he feels all men are being, like, prosecuted, you know, not all men are rapists. Um, and it, it plays a bit funny because... I, I, It's an interesting scene. I just think they hit it a bit... A bit too much in the face but you can see what they're doing so i mean for, for those sorts of scenes you kind of have to say okay fair enough you know you're doing something a bit but they pack so much in so you get like the sort of big kills or the big sort of reveals at at the house um all this back and forth and they sort of go the screen route i mean it's ridiculous and it's just so silly. I'm sorry. This is what drags this film down. I actually think stuff, silly shit like this, makes this version of Black Christmas a legitimately bad film, even with all the good stuff it's trying to do. Um, so they they've got bow and arrows. They're shooting fucking bow and arrows at them. What the hell is going on? They're wearing these stupid masks. And then it does the scream thing where, where you have, you know, two or three of them. There's more than one killer. They just keep coming. Uh, it's it's insane. It's so, so dumb. And unfortunately, it's not scary. It didn't scare me. I, I didn't feel much tension in those scenes. I know some people have. They didn't work for me. Um, yeah, no tension. I... I so I have to put that on the direction. I didn't actually think the direction was that good in those big sort of scenes. And it, it just goes from one dumb thing to the next. So we then get onto the whole thing back at the fraternity. And there's this twist with one of the girls where she's actually working for the fraternity guys, for, for the principal. She actually turns on the image and put, I keep, I can't remember a character name. Someone tell me in the comments. But she actually turns on that character and, you know, knocks her out or whatever and, and drags her. Well, I think the boyfriend knocks her out maybe because he's under the spell as well. But yeah, you get this this twist with one of the housemates where she's sort of working with, because at one point Imogen Poots thinks she's going to be saved by her, but then she turns that around and she's actually, you know, working with them and she ends up getting her come, come up. It's because she, they trick her because they're sexist pigs, so they're not really going to they're not really going to spare her just because they helped her. But then there's, but it's not credible. You, you don't buy because she's not actually under the, the floor of the, of the, the ooze, the funk. Um, so it, it doesn't really work with her because she's kind of, it's a bit murky why she does it. I think it's just because she's, she's got a bit fed up with all the, the feminists, like, you know, propaganda and then campaigning and then and, and she's maybe seen as a bit of and you know i'm sure there's characters like this in the world but even so 
I didn't buy it as a twist. It just felt like a twist for the sake of a twist. So it all goes bonkers. It all goes insane. Now, to be fair, the one thing I'll say is it did wake me up because I, I was falling asleep for a lot of this film. I just thought it was quite boring. So the ending, although it is so silly and so dumb and the twists are just packed in and don't work, I will give it credit for saying it was so, so silly, so, so dumb. <laughs> in a funny sort of way, it ended up being entertaining. It's like in a what the fuck sort of way um so it was kind of like it when they turn the tables on the bad guys and they do this whole it's almost like charlie angels or sort of an avenger because chris comes back and the rest of the girls are there and they sort of all gang up on them and kick a bit of butt and you know it's it's fine to have a you know fist in the air sort of moment but it just felt a little bit out of place and a little bit out of nowhere and again quite cartoonish again if the film had built this stuff up more you could go with it but i mean at this point it, it went from being a horror movie into something else as a horror movie it fails in my opinion as a feminist film it fails because it doesn't do enough with it. That stuff feels heavy handed. That stuff could have been given more time. So I I appreciate some of that stuff and the ideas. But most of the ideas, in my opinion, don't make for a satisfying film. So in my opinion, very, very poor. I, I do want to go back and watch it because I've heard alternative thoughts and... I do appreciate they are trying to do something a bit different. And by the way, I missed the, the, the mid-credit scenes with the cat, apparently, which I'm disappointed of. It was a cold night. I wanted to just get home, to be fair. So I, I did sort of leave the cinema quite briskly. But apparently there's a mid credit scene with the cat being affected by the ooze, apparently. So, yeah. Nice one. I, I'm glad. I, I'm sorry I missed out. That that sounded like a good bit of fun. But but in any case, I'm sure they're going to try and re restart the franchise. You know, reboot the franchise and actually turn this into a franchise. But we'll see. At the moment, this one isn't doing particularly well. Um, it was very cheap to make. Um, who knows? It might still. I mean, it's made about 7.5 million. It was a 5 million pound budget. So it has to make more because it has to... Nowadays, you have to make double your budget. But So at the moment, that's looking a bit unlikely. But who knows? I mean, I'm sure we've not seen the last of Black Christmas. But that is my review of the new Black Christmas from 2016. Sorry, 2019. I'm forgetting what year I'm in. Um, and you can find on the channel, you can find my reviews of the other two Black Christmases. So the original and then the 2006 remake. And yeah you can check those out for comparison as far as this one goes i will re-watch this film because i feel it's something i could get more out of on another viewing but for now i really didn't like it unfortunately i'll give it three out of ten i thought it was really poor personally but i might change my mind over time um and i'll be back soon i'll i'll try and maybe do another christmas themed review on the channel soon also you'll notice i've been doing end of years list so so far i've done my top 10 tv shows of the sorry of the year so you can check that out you also i did my top 10 movies of 2019 you can check that out on the channel now Speaking of Christmas, I've just done my my top 10 Christmas movies of all time on the channel. That went up today, so, and fingers crossed, you, no spoilers, but there's a decent chance Black Christmas, the original, might be in there. But hopefully some interesting picks. So you can check that out, and I'm going to do end of decade lists as well. So some more lists coming up between now and the new year. But thank you very much for listening. I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.